so welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, I actually want to highlight and talk about books by well-known authors, less popular books. And I stuck with like the typical well-known black authors, you know, like Amaya, Tony, you know, etc, etc. Let's just get started. Okay, so the first I would say is Tari Jones. Now Tari Jones is known for American Marriage, right? It's an Oprah book club. It was on Barack Obama's like favorite, you know, books. After I read it, I wanted to explore more of her works. One book that I like of hers is Silver Sparrow. This actually came out before American Marriage. And I have read all of her books except one. I haven't read her debut novel and I have all of her books. Leaving Atlanta, I know that was her debut novel. But this was so good and I read it on audio and just fantastic. You have, girl, a man, John Witherspoon, I think that's his name. He has two families, two, two wives, okay? And one of the family, the mom and the daughter know about the other family and the other one doesn't. And one that mama that knew about, you know, the other wife, other, about the other wife and the child. Oh, what, what did she say? Oh, well, I had them first. Like, seriously, girl. Now, one thing, clearly, a man that has two families, it's, it cannot wrap up in a nice, neat bow. Somebody is bound to get hurt. So you just see which one of them does. And they both come from, like, different class system and you just see how he navigates this. It just got on my nerves. Okay, that daddy. And it was like, he just didn't think anything was wrong with it. And then also too, not just him, but that mama that knew. I'm like, girl, is you serious? And my thing is like, girl, your daughter watching this. You know, I had a time. I was talking back at this book and everything. It, it's a book that you talk. It's a book that's a conversational piece. Next is Terry McMillan. Now we know Terry McMillan is known for Waiting to Excel. I still got her groove back. Love them. Have read Waiting to Excel twice. Love the movie. Love how I got her groove back. I think I like the movie better than the book. Um, but her debut novel, Mama, just as good as Waiting to Excel. I might say, I think I like this a little bit better than Waiting to Excel. It's like Waiting to Excel is two this one. This is, like I said, a debut novel. It's kind of like a kind of age um, story. What well, is? And it's loosely, very loosely, loosely, loosely based on Terry McMillan's family. Terry is Otis. Terry is one of five, I believe, and I think she's the oldest. And she's from Port Port Huron, Michigan. It was set in Port Huron, Michigan. And you had a mom that Mildred. Oh my goodness. A spitfire will tell you how it is and you know she's trying to make ends meet when it comes to raising her family i mean she's she's alone you know she doesn't have a man you know in her life and she has these children and you have frida who is the oldest and she wants to be a writer she goes to you know california and it is hilarious you have these care these kids in this book you could tell you know how you have kids where you could tell they've been around a lot of grown folks because the way that they just talk talk and act these kids are exactly like this <laughs> i always remember the scene where they had an uncle or something where he he wasn't bathing okay and they were like, we need to tell him that he needs to bathe. Like, and you know, they use different words and these kids, right? And so they're like, you know what we go do? We go get him a big basket for Christmas of like smell goods. It is hilarious the way that she writes this. Oh my goodness. This is also a conversational piece. I mean, Terry McMillan is known for her dialogue. No one can write dialogue like Terry McMillan. It's just like, mic drop. That dialogue is so relatable. It's so realistic. It's just, you know... And especially coming, and especially being a black person, especially a black woman, you can really relate to it. Next is Maya Angelou, of course. Now, Maya is known for her autobiographies. Fantastic, read all of them. And she's known for the first one. I don't know where the cage bird sings. It's one of my favorite. But I would say, at one point, Gathered Together in My Name was my favorite. Um, this is... She's moved out of her house, out of her mom's house. She's 16 years old, she, you know, young mother. And some stuff happened in this. Okay, she work in a brothel. She have a little, is he a pimp or something that, I mean, get her together. She, she going through it, okay? All while being a teen mom. 
fantastic i remember when i read this in 10th grade it was just flabbergasted i was just flabbergasted but two years ago i read all of her i went back and read all of her autobiographies and i realized i like this one as an adult a song flung up to heaven this is talking about she's already established her son um guy is older he's in college it's talking about how we lost martin luther king and malcolm x and i remember she said in this book you know they're killing our black leaders and at one point she was like i i just don't like white people i do not like white people and she would just prejudge them but the people that had nothing to do with that she like yeah girl anyway you know what i mean and she talks about that and she talks about the sadness of you know just griping with they're actually killing leaders people that we are following like it's it's scary you know when you think about it and then also too she was friends with both of them it was malcolm x he was telling her you know i really want to get on i really want you to get on board with me and, you know towards the end of his life he started coming from a peaceful you know protest and she was like oh yeah you know we're gonna meet up we're gonna do this and everything and then he was assassinated and although it is heart-wrenching but she does have some funny aspects um to it you also see her her budding you know uh writing career because she starts going to some um groups some writer groups and really getting in the groove of you know writing her stories and things like that i mean this woman was amazing amazing you're talking about fearless fearless next is james baldwin now james baldwin he's known for his what non-fiction books like the fire next time he's also known for gather together my name that was his um debut novel it was like it's a coming of age story loosely based on his life but i would say i prefer james baldwin's fictional works but that's because i'm a fiction type of girl and i two years two years ago i read all of his whole fictional catalog love it i would say the first one i love is a play it's called the Amen Corner. And this actually was on Broadway. You had Isabel, what's her name? Isabel Sanford, who played Wheezy on the Jefferson. She was in this. And then you had E. Richards. You're dealing with a woman. She is a minister. And her congregation is worried that she's going to backslide because her strange, hus her strange husband, who is a like musician, um, you know, he didn't backslide, so he, he don't... <laughs> He don't deal with the church folks and they have a son and she's also worried that you know he's going to kind of like back backslide and all of this hilarious it's serious as i'm describing it but it has some very funny bits to it and i think if you grew up in a black church you would really understand this a lot of the phrases and things like that i was cracking up because i grew up in a, i grew up in a black church i attend a black church so short and not a lot of people know about this play and then i would say just honorable mention going to meet the man these are short stories by him one short story that stands out to me i think is going to meet the man i believe it's going to meet the man but he is writing from a woman's perspective and if you know james watwin's works a lot of his characters mainly all of them are his protagonist main protagonist are you know black males and just to see him writing from a woman's perspective and having her be the main you know protagonist i really liked it he is another person that can write black women you know characters sometimes it'd be iffy when a black male writes women characters but he knows how to do that and then also too this has sunny's blues in this collection he's known for that but i mean you know james watwin's works you're going to talk about inequality of blacks um mainly men next is alice walker of course now y'all know she's known for the color purple fantastic have two copies read it twice love the movie one book that i really like of hers is actually a collection of short stories too and it's called you can't keep a good you can't keep a good woman down the she hits you with a bang the first story I think is one of my favorites it's called 1955 and she's talking about how it's basically it's based on Elvis stole all them songs from black people um including women and men um and you know the way that he moves and all that that's that's black that's why little Richard every time he came out he's talking about I was an originator they stole from me da 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 well, in this particular story, she's talking about a man that, you know, he ends up taking, well, not, 
he does ask permission it's a woman that recorded the song um and then you know she really didn't have no career uh but he really liked the song he was like can i record this buy it from you and all that so he did but it became a big phenomenon but the way that she writes it you know he gets all this money from the that song and she is a songwriter and she's a songwriter and she's the person that originated the song but the long scale of things she don't get all the money that he got and you just see that so like i said she hits you with a bang i love a lot of these stories but that was my favorite and then lastly of course we got to mention tony morrison she is a well-known black um author she's known for what Oh, Lord, she loved for a lot of stuff. Okay, The Bluest Eye, we know. Beloved, Beloved, uh, Sula. I personally, my favorite is Sula. And then my second would be this book, which is her last fictional book um, before her passing. It's called God Help the Child. I like this because it deals with, well, no, it don't deal with passing. You have a young woman named Bride. Bride is like pitch black, they say. And she always wears white to just show off her skin color, especially in the later, you know, parts of her life. But her mother does can't stand her because she's so, so black. And she does something that affects someone else <laughs> in a major way. But she does that so she can get affection and attention from her mother. But she ruins someone else's life. It's real deep, but it was really, really good. Now, also, this wasn't too hard to navigate. You know with Toni Morrison, she can be very hard to navigate, okay? You you have to pay attention. You cannot miss one line from her. You cannot. Otherwise, you lost the whole entire book. But this one was not that hard to grasp. Another one that was not that hard to grasp is Love by her. And this is dealing with a man that his name is Bill, is it Crosby? He owns a hotel um and he is he is a um papa was a rolling stone so he got he dies and he got all these women like uh-uh that that hotel belonged to me and they like no it, he said it belonged to me so you see his life after he is dead and his life you know and then you see his life when he is alive and how he just you know how he just played all these women and stuff like that this is my second no this is my yeah, this is this, this is my second book I read from her because I read Toni Morrison late. I was like 19 years old when I read Toni and I read Jazz about her and then I wanted to read this. Really good. I honestly enjoyed it. This also, like I said, is not hard to, you know, grasp. It's a lot of tea and drama in this because this man, like I said, he was a mess leading them women on like that. But yeah. So yeah, guys, that is it when it comes to this video. I just wanted to highlight some books from well-known authors but y'all know i like to read the hidden gems i also like to read books that not everyone is talking about and i also love the fact you know when they mention like a popular author and they like oh you know like for example alice walker oh you know i read the color purple or oh, what else did you read by her um crickets you know what i mean so i always want to be one of those readers where i read like their other books not just their well-known books and sometimes I find that I like the lesser known books as opposed to the popular books so yeah guys that's all I have for you and I'll be back with more black books bye